this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, for indeed there is no name greater than the name of Jesus. So we greet you this morning in the blessed, sweet, wonderful name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. We pray that you've had a blessed and a wonderful week. Amen. And we welcome you into this worship space on yet this Lord's day. Amen. Uh, we praise the name of the Lord for the Lord is worthy to be praised. Amen. Our call to worship scripture this morning comes from Psalms 103, a very familiar song with a song that simply says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And, and whenever the psalmist, amen, calls for uh, the blessing of the name of the Lord or the praising of God's name or the extolling uh, of God's name, amen, uh, they will always give you the reason at that moment why they are calling for the praise and the blessing of God's name. And in Psalms 103, the psalmist it says you ought to bless the Lord all uh, with all of your soul amen number one because you don't want to forget all of his benefits amen I don't know about you but I'm glad I serve a God with benefits amen of uh, that word benefits in Psalms 103 amen points to those those acts of good that God does amen has God done anything good for you amen did he do anything good for you this past week? If so, you ought to bless the name of the Lord. If God's just good, and you know he's good all the time, you ought to bless the name of the Lord. Then he goes on further and says, not only just bless him for his benefits, but bless him because he forgives your iniquities. Amen. It's one thing to thank God for his acts of goodness, but it's another thing to thank him that he was good to you when you didn't even deserve his goodness towards you. Amen. I don't know about you, but I can stop and shout right there. Amen because I know that I, I don't deserve any of God's blessings, but I'm so glad God is faithful, God is kind, God is forgiving, God is long-suffering, God is comforting, God is caring. Ah, God is just good and worthy to be praised. Amen. Join me in a word of prayer this morning. God, we bless you this very moment. Because you are the God of benefits. You're the God of forgiveness. Psalms 103 says you're also the God who heals. You're also the God who redeems life from destruction. You're the, you're, you're, you're the God that provides uh, uh, benefits and provides those things that satisfies your children. We goes on for us to say we thank you that you're a God who also executes justice and righteousness. God, we've got so many things to bless your name for us. So we thank you today that you're allowing us to assemble to worship one more time. Uh, bless all who is within the sanctuary space and then bless all of those who are in our virtual atmosphere, God, who are receiving this over, uh, over these airways. So God, we pray that you will bless them right now. Bless every home, bless every person, uh, bless every family, bless every individual, wherever they are who are engaging in this worship moment or who will be uh, engaged in this even throughout the course of this day. So God, we thank you right now for the blessed privilege of being a blessing unto others. We thank you for the blessed privilege of standing before you and worshiping your name. We pray that when we said and all said and done today, you will be pleased uh, with the worship that we, re we rendered unto you on this day. So God, we welcome your presence, the presence of your Holy Spirit. Anoint us afresh so that when we when we finish with this, this, this moment, this moment in time will be better afterwards than what we were entering into it. We thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, this day we pray. Amen. Amen. If you love the Lord, just, just say amen, amen, or wave your hands, whatever you need to do. Just praise the name of the Lord this day. God is worthy to be praised as we prepare to receive this worship praise team here on today we want to remind you amen uh election season is upon us please get out to vote get out get ready to vote amen uh you may call your county clerk's office and request 
your absentee ballot, please do that ASAP. Amen. You may have to be a little bit forceful with them to get them to do that. Amen. But do what you need to do to get your ballot. If you have some concerns about mailing your ballot back in, there will be designated drop-off spots. Amen. That will be identified where you can take and drop off your absentee ballot. Amen. Uh, you may also go online. Amen. They're really encouraging us uh, to go online to GoVoteKY.com uh, to receive your absentee ballot uh, and be able to vote that way. Amen. So please check that out. GoVoteKY.com. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to call the county clerk's office to get clarifications uh, for, for, your, for your ballot. Amen. And also remember uh, Governor Bashir uh, enact, enacting an act to restoring voter rights to, to those with past felons. Amen. So uh, that, that many, many have, uh, actually the county's over 175,000 uh, have been given the right, have their voter voting rights restored. And so if you're one of those, or you know someone who might be one, please have them go to civilrightsrestoration.ky.gov. That is civilrightsrestoration.ky.gov. Every vote counts, amen, and every vote matters. So let's get our hearts and minds geared up uh, for this very, very important election season, amen. Again, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Come on and let us bless his holy name. Receive this praise team on this blessed Lord's day. God bless you.
my voice. Amen. It's, it's, it's not too late. Amen. Amen. Now is a good time. Amen. Uh, to reach out to God and tell him you want him in your life and you desire relationship with him. Amen. I tell you, your life will never, ever be the same. Amen. Amen. There's just something uh, that the Lord does. Amen. For his children uh, that no matter um, no matter where you are, amen, or, or where you've been, God is good, amen, and he'll be right there uh, to, to love on you, to take care of you, uh, and to strengthen and grow you and develop you, amen, that's the reason why, amen, uh, you ought to rejoice, <laughs> amen, uh, rejoice because God is there for us, God wills to uh, be there for us, and I, I, I know I'm not the only one who can declare that God is a mighty good God, amen, As, and you want to have him there as part of your life, amen, amen. To God be the glory, thank you to this praise team uh, for blessing us here on the day, thank God for you, amen, thank Thankful also to our uh, audio and video technology ministry and those persons uh, helping us to, to bring this to you, amen, as well as our, uh, our uh, health ministry. Thank you for your uh, being here every Sunday, making sure that we're staying healthy in worship, amen, as well as our deacons. Thank you for their support, amen. I always like to try and remember to thank them because without, without them, amen, none of this uh, would be possible. It takes all of us working together. Uh, to do what we do. And we thank you for your support. Amen. We thank you for all that you're, uh, you're doing uh, prayerfully as well as financially. Thank you for your generous, uh, the generosity of your hearts. Remember, generous hearts changes hearts. Amen. And as we change hearts, we are doing that as we strive to be the church in the community for the hearts of the community. Amen. God bless you here on today. Let me say congratulations. Thank you to our Sunday school 
Amen. We had a wonderful turnout for our uh, Back to Sunday School drive-in on yesterday. Thank all of you, the members who came out uh, to, to pick up your, your Sunday School survival kit. Amen. I hope that was a blessing to you. As it, hope it would encourage you uh, to, 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 to stay connected to Sunday School. And for those who weren't connected, get connected. Amen. Uh, we, we, we look forward to seeing you on Saturdays uh, via Zoom. Amen. Uh, we have wonderful Sunday school classes. Our adult class, um, a combined adult class meets at 10 a.m. Uh, via Zoom. Then our children uh, meet at 11 a.m. And then our youth uh, meet at um, 12 noon. Amen. And you can get those Zoom links. Let us know in boxes. If you don't have it, uh, in boxes or email us or call the church and we'll make sure we get you that information because we want you to join us for a study. On last Sunday, we talked about there are some benefits to being a student. Amen. Amen. Uh, you learn how to worship God better. Amen. You learn how to work for God better. Amen. You just, you just become a better servant for God. Amen. Uh, as, as you become a, a better student. So we encourage you to become a better student. And with that in mind, amen, we're going to keep our Sunday school theme in mind today um, and, it, uh, and, and really keep with the subject matter of our Sunday school. This, this quarter we're working from uh, the subject of love. Amen. Love. And this first unit uh, this, these, these classes, these sessions in September is featuring the patriarchal character of Joseph, amen, uh, and his journey there, uh, his life uh, as it unfolds from Genesis 39 uh, through uh, 45, I think the last Sunday school lesson we deal with uh, 45, uh, then I'm going to pick up a text from chapter 50, amen, we deal with family love, amen, and then from there uh, in October you will deal with inclusive love, loving enemies, loving those different than us, amen, uh, who we discover are really friends and not enemies, we make them enemies because they're not like us, so we'll learn how to, uh, how to love inclusively, then we'll talk about love and Internally, as the body of Christ, love among believers. Amen. But this particular first unit, in the month of September, we're dealing with love from the perspective of family love. Amen. Family love. And sometimes it can be hard to love family. Amen. We, we pick up this from Joseph's life and what happened to him in the midst of his family, but we can learn uh, that, that, that even hurt from family uh, can be hurt that helps us if we, if we learn how to make sure we love and not become bitter. Amen. Because whatever, whatever doesn't make us bitter will make us better. Amen. Amen. So Genesis, we're picking up the end of the narrative in the, in the book of Genesis, well, the end of the story of Joseph. We pick it up in Genesis chapter number 50 this morning. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 50, beginning in verse 15, we'll read through verse 21, all right? Genesis chapter number 50, verses 15 through 21, amen. Genesis chapter 50, 15 through 21. The word of God reads this way as I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. So they sent messengers to Joseph, saying, before your father died, he commanded, saying, thus you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespasses of your brothers and their sin, uh, for they did evil to you. Now, please forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. 18, then his brother also went and fell down before his face. They said, behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? Meaning, am I, am I, here, to, am I here to judge you? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Amen. Amen. Verse number 20, but as for you, you meant, it, uh, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about it, about it as it is this day to save many people 
alive. Amen. With, with these verses, in particular verse 20 in mind, when it's used for a simple subject, it's all good. Amen. It's all good. Amen. 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 Many of you out there are familiar with that phrase, it's all good. Amen. At one particular point in time, many of us have uttered that phrase when someone has done something to offend us, when someone has done something to hurt us, uh, we, 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 we will respond sometimes with the phrase, it's all good. Amen. 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 It's, it's, it's all good. Amen. But depending upon how bad the hurt is or how bad uh, the, the thing that happened to us is, it can sometimes be hard to say it's all good. Amen. But when we learn from Joseph's ordeal, amen, that even Joseph, out of all that he went through, came to a place and point in time where he could still say, it's all good. Amen. As I said, we're picking up from our Sunday school theme, amen. This particular unit deals with family love. And I said in introduction, I stated, amen, uh, loving family can sometimes be hard. Amen. Uh, sometimes loving family can be difficult, especially when family hurts you. Amen. Uh, uh, it can be argued that there's really no hurt like family hurt. Amen. Because the last somebody uh, that you expect to hurt you is a family member. Amen. Somebody you're related to. Somebody you grew up in the same household with. Somebody who shared the same mother and father with you. Someone who shared the same table space with you. Someone who you grew up with. Sometimes it can be very difficult to handle hurt from family, but I declare, as I said earlier, that if you don't allow the hurt to make you bitter, the hurt can make you better. Amen. So much so to it, when it's all said and done, you'll be able to look at those who hurt you and simply say, it's all good. Amen. Join me in our text this morning and let's, let's see the reason why Joseph could get to the point or how he made it to the point of dealing with the hurt uh, that he had from his brothers, amen, and his plight in life from Genesis chapter 37 all the way up now to Genesis chapter number 50, what Joseph went through, what Joseph dealt with. I want to see, look and see what is it about this encounter, this experience that allowed Joseph, amen, here even at the end to declare to his brothers, it's all good, amen. Number one, I only got two simple points for you today, amen. Number one, I believe Joseph could look at his brothers in this text, and we'll summarize it in a minute, amen, as it refers to the evil that they did, amen. Let me just go ahead and give a precursor real quick. You know, the evil that they did that they're referencing here in Genesis chapter 50 after their father died, amen, they figured that Joseph would, 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 would get revenge on them because in Genesis chapter number 39, amen, Genesis chapter number 39, we discover where, where, the, where Joseph's brothers, chapter 37 rather, where Joseph's brothers grew uh, in hatred of him because of his father's favoritism toward Joseph, amen, and because uh, Joseph uh, seemed to be uh, a spoiled brat. He had a level of arrogance to him, even when he shared with them a couple of dreams that he had about, uh, about them bowing down to him, amen. They could not stand Joseph, and the more they interacted with Joseph, the more hate they had in their heart for Joseph, to, so much so to where one day, once Joseph's father, Jacob, sent the sons off, amen, to, 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 for the sheep to go do some grazing in a new area, amen, uh, Joseph's daddy sent him to look after them and to bring back a report. And when they saw Joseph afar off, uh, they, they plotted how to get rid of Joseph. They became to the point where they hated him so much to where they wanted to get rid of him, didn't want to have anything to do with wanted to kill Joseph. But the eldest brother, Reuben, spoke up and said, not, let's not kill him, let's just throw him down in this pit because Reuben was going to come back later and take him out the pit, amen. But in between being thrown in the pit and Reuben making it back to camp, amen, some Ishmaelite, Amenonite traders uh, on their way to Egypt rode by the camp's ground, amen. And the brothers said, well, let's not kill him. That won't make us no profit. Let's make some money off of him. So they sold 
Joseph into the hands of the Midianite or Ishmaelite traders, amen, and, and took that money and took his coat, dipped it in animal's blood, took it back to his daddy and said, uh, is this your son's coat? Daddy said, yeah, it is. And they said, well, an animal must have killed him and he is no more. Joseph was sold in uh, to the hands of the Ishmaelite Midianite traders who then took him uh, to Egypt where he was sold as a slave to Potiphar, captain of the guard. We can stop right there. That's enough of, enough of an overview right there to get us to where we are in our text because here in our text, the brothers have now uh, met back up with Joseph. He's second in command in Egypt. He has just provided uh, a plan uh, to save Egypt from famine, amen, and they met up with his brothers and all is well, all is fine, at least Joseph thought it was, but after their father Jacob died, they felt guilty and felt like now that dad is dead, amen, uh, Joseph will repay us for the evil that we did to him, amen, so we make our way to verse number 20 and we pick up the narrative as his brothers are bowing for forgiveness at his feet and Joseph simply says it's all good <laughs> can I tell you why Joseph said it's all good I believe Joseph said it was all good number one is because God had a plan for their plot amen uh, Joseph could say it, it, it's all good because Joseph grew to the point of discovering that God had a plan for their plot Amen. Notice in verse number 20, the Bible says, uh, Joseph says, now, as for you, amen, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Can I tell you what Joseph was really saying right there? Joseph was simply saying, God had a plan for your plot. Amen. The word meant, notice the text says that they meant it for good. But God meant it. Same Hebrew word meant means the same thing. It means to consider. Amen. It means to reckon. It means to think. It means, it comes from a word that means to weave. Amen. So on a negative side, the word weave means to plot. Amen. But on a positive side, it really points to a plan. Amen. They're weave, that they're woven plot. They're plot to get rid of Joseph. They're plot to hurt Joseph. They're plot to do evil to Joseph. The word evil in the text means to provide adversity and harm and hurt. They were really looking to hurt Joseph and they did hurt Joseph but Joseph says the hurt that you, that you caused me, it, it was hurt that Help me, amen, because what I discovered was is that your plot was all a part of God's plan, amen. That's why you don't have to lose sleep today over folks plotting and planning, plotting against you, because whatever they're plotting, can't nothing happen to you that God doesn't know about or God has not already woven in together, amen. No matter what they're weaving for your demise, it's all a part of God's weaving for your development. That's the reason why you can't get bitter because you don't really and know what God's doing just yet but I thank God for Romans chapter 8 verse 28 that says all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are the called according to his purpose can I just back it up just for and give the Greek of that it's not the mere fact that all things work together really the Greek says he works all things together which means things just don't happen by coincidence God is weaving good and evil for my good uh, Joseph, Joseph said, Joseph said, it's all good because God had a plan for your plot. Uh, this phrase, uh, you meant it for good, uh, you meant it, for, you meant it against me for, 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 for evil, but God meant it for, for good. Uh, it, it, it's a phrase that, that, that points to a particular situation and then the outcome of the situation. Uh, uh, Jacob says, now, uh, when, you, when you devised the plan to kill me, uh, and Reuben spoke up to revise the plan, then you re-revised the plan and threw me in the pit, and then you kept on revising the plan, until then you threw me in the pit. Once you threw me in the pit, then you sold me to Israelite, slaves, Israelite traitors to get rid of me. All the stuff... You did to me, he said, that whole messed up situation was for my good. <laughs> he said, I, I, I've grown 
come to a point now where I've gotten where I am now to where I discovered that, 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 that really and truly what you were plotting, uh, God was already planning, amen. While, while, while you were working out a, a plot to get rid of me, God was using that uh, for me, amen. You meant it against me. You meant it, you meant to hurt me, but the hurt you meant for me, God meant it for my good. That situation that happened, not only was it messed up, but it was messed up from my perspective at first, but I can discover uh, it wasn't a mess up, amen. It was a step up, amen, because God, that was some stuff God was doing, uh, with me, amen, to get me, uh, yeah, yeah, to be what I want, he needed me to be, he says, so, 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 well, one of the things he was doing, uh, uh, he was, he, part, part, part of God's plan for their plot was his plan to prepare me, amen, uh, notice in the text he says, uh, uh, you meant it, you, you meant it, you meant it for evil, God meant it for good, the one, the one good thing that God meant was, what, what was my preparation, Joseph said, God was preparing me, amen, and notice the rest of verse 20 says, uh, in order to bring it about as it is this day, yeah, 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 this, this day, where, where, where I was then, and where I am now, <laughs> uh, God was preparing me, yeah, 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 I had a couple of dreams, but I didn't understand them fully, so, so I shared them in an arrogant manner, I was a, I was a, I was a boy who was shown favoritism, and I didn't have a, a nail lick of humility in my bones, I was an arrogant little something, amen, I thought I was somebody, amen, but, 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 but now I discovered uh, that, that it wasn't all about me, I had an arrogant spirit, and God had to get rid of my arrogant spirit, because God has something for me to do so he used you to get rid of some stuff that was in me so I can't get mad at you because you were the tool that God used to begin preparing me ah, ah, yeah yeah God had to prepare me and, and I shared this in our Sunday school overview on this past Tuesday night but when you when you look at Joseph's narrative you gotta you, you, you gotta take time and hang out in Psalms 105 verses 16 through 22 for a minute you got to hang out there amen because that gives you uh, a, 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 a quick synopsis uh, of Joseph's life amen and what God was doing with Joseph the whole time amen God God Psalms 105, 16 uh, through 22, God, uh, the psalmist says that, 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 that God uh, had, had planned a famine for the land, and, and yet he prepared a man for the famine, amen, to bless the land during the famine. So uh, he sent Joseph, yeah, to Egypt as the man with the plan for the famine in the land, yeah, and he was doing that because, uh, I picked this up later, he was doing that because he had Israel in mind, so, so therefore he said he sent him before them, and I like that because it says from the time that God uh, declared in the, in, in the throne room of heaven that there would be a famine in Egypt, amen, he began preparing for the famine, which means he began preparing for the famine by preparing Joseph to be the man to handle the famine when it came. I love that because it says, amen, that my God has got good plans for all of his children. Just hang in there with him, amen. But whatever he has for us, he also knows that there's some stuff that he's got to work out of us. That's the reason why, amen, Psalms 105, down around about verse 19, the Bible says, Amen. Uh, that, that, that until the time that the Lord's word came, the word of the Lord tested Joseph. Amen. Meaning uh, before the time of the fulfillment of the time of the famine came, God tested 
Joseph. And the word tested in Psalms 105 verse 19 literally means to refine. Amen. That's what God was doing with Joseph. He was refining Joseph. Amen. He was making him into the man that he needed him to be. So when you follow the narrative of Joseph, amen, when he first had his dreams, amen, Genesis chapter 37, he said, I have a dream. <laughs> or I have dreamed, or I have dreamed another dream. In Genesis chapter 37, it was all about ah, 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 me, me, me. That all sound familiar to somebody, amen. But it's all about you. That's some stuff that God's got to get out of you. And depending upon how deep that stuff is in you might determine the depth that God has to take you through to get the stuff out of you because God's got something good he wants to do through you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So therefore, by the time he, Joseph ends up in Potiphar's house, Amen. Move, makes his way from, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, so you go back and read it. Amen. Genesis chapter 39, he's there at Potiphar's house, does a good job, but his wife, uh, Potiphar's wife has a thing for Joseph. Joseph wouldn't sleep with her, so she gets mad. Amen. Uh, 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 tells a lie that he tried to rape her, and he didn't, and he ended up in the prison house. Amen. And, but then, and then in the prison house, he met up with Pharaoh's chief butler and baker. Have I got a witness here? And next thing you know, that's Genesis chapter 40. Then all of a sudden you got Genesis chapter 41. And Joseph is now before Pharaoh interpreting Pharaoh's dream because he was able to interpret the dreams of the chief butler and the chief baker while he was in the prison house. Amen. And, and when he stood before the chief butler and baker and they told Joseph his dreams, Joseph says, dreams, yeah. Uh, interpretations of those come from God. He doesn't mention his name nowhere in the conversation. Then when he stands before Pharaoh, he doesn't mention his name again. He just simply says, it is, it, it, it is God who will give Pharaoh the interpretation of the dream and the peace that he has. He's nowhere in the mix. Amen. So by the time we move from Genesis chapter 30. 9 to Genesis chapter uh, 37, Genesis chapter 39, Genesis chapter 40, Genesis chapter 41, Joseph went through a transformation. He was no longer an arrogant, immature person, but he had become a humble man who, who ascended to the throne, watch this, who ascended to the throne as second in command of Pharaoh at the age of 30 years old. My goodness. What the Lord will do with you if you allow him to. The Lord had a plan for their plot. Their plot, their brother's plot they're referring right here to in Genesis chapter 50 was the, was, was the kick off the God's preparation plan. Amen. So Joseph says, when I look at where I was and where I am right now, man, and brothers, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good because God had a plan for your plot. You meant it for evil, but God already had it planned out for my good because God was going to do something good to me so he could do something good through me. God was preparing me. Not only was God preparing me, but God was positioning me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Genesis chapter 37, again, he had those two dreams. Uh, both of those dreams signified that Joseph's brothers would one day and fathers would one day bow down to him. Joseph didn't understand it at the time. Amen. Um, but he would later be, he would come to grow to learn and understand it. Now, it's interesting, some language that's, that, 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 that's sprinkled throughout the narrative uh, that, 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 that bears uh, uh, the checking out in the text. When Joseph says, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. What did he say? Yeah, yeah, he said, to bring it about as it is this day. I mean, this, 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 this day. I mean, uh, until, he was saying, uh, what you start, what you did then positioned me to where I am now. If you hadn't have done, did what you did then, uh, I wouldn't be positioned where I am now. Uh, for somebody, yeah, you, you need, when, when we get done today, you, you need to text somebody, call them, and tell them thank you. Amen. Because truth of the matter is, you wouldn't be in the position you are right now if some stuff hadn't happened to you then. Amen. You're better now because of stuff that happened to you then. You didn't understand that now, so you, 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 you owe somebody a thank you card today. Amen. And, and, and you, don't have to, you, you don't have to be long about it. Just, just tell them thank you 
it's all good. Amen. Here, because he said, you were, you, God was positioning me when I was in my daddy's house. I had favor. Amen. But watch the language. Genesis 37, uh, they put Joseph down in a pit. <laughs> uh, the Israelites, the Israelite traders took him, Genesis 39, chapter 39, verse 1, took him down to Potiphar's house. After his Potiphar's house experience, they put him down in a dungeon. Amen. It looked like every, every, every step in Joseph's life was going down, down, down. But really and truly, they got to have your spiritual, spiritual, spiritual eyes on because it looked like he was going down, but he was getting closer to his position. <laughs> You're right, because watch this. When he gets to Potiphar's house, Potiphar is only captain of the guard. He's just one of Pharaoh's officers, but he's not in Pharaoh's household. <laughs> and, but when he gets put into prison, he gets put into contact with the chief butler and the chief baker who are closer than the captain of the guard. They are literally there in Pharaoh's household. So when he tells the dreams of the chief butler and the chief baker, by the time Pharaoh has his dreams, the chief butler uh, comes back and says, hey, Pharaoh, look at here. Uh, 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 I I know, I know, I know a Hebrew down in the prison chambers that's able to interpret dreams, which meant that when they called Joseph, he went on up in the Pharaoh's household. I mean, which means every, every, every step he took put him closer to Pharaoh's household. And I don't, only God can do something like that. Joseph said, the only reason I'm second in command right now is because you planned it for evil, but God has something good in mind. He sent them Israelite traders by at just the right time. Cause Potiphar to notice me at just the right time. Put me in a prison house at just the right time. A butler remembered me at just the right time. I ended up sitting on second of the throne at just the right time. So that when the famine hit, I was there at just the right time. I was in position because God had a plan for your plots. God is good. And we can, we, we, we can be confident today uh, that we can trust God and what God is doing in our lives. So therefore, we, we, we should be able to say, it's all good. Whatever you do to me, it's all good. Somehow, some way, I may not understand it right now because it took Joseph some time to really, to really understand that, amen. Even so, when Genesis chapter 41 ends, uh, Joseph uh, has two sons, amen. And both of his sons, the name Manasseh and Ephraim, are names that seem to suggest that, 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 that Joseph was thanking God, that, that God had made him fruitful in the land of his misery, amen. Uh, that's not that Ephraim, which means that God, you have made me to forget my family. Amen. The troubles of my family. Joseph had no idea that even in Genesis chapter 41, uh, he was not preparing Joseph to forget his father. He was positioning Joseph to help his father. I'm just trying to tell you, all along the way, God develops you in life even when you don't understand. So by the time we get to this point in the text, Joseph says, I see things clearly now. Amen. So, 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 so I, I'm, 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 I've been re reconciled to my family. I I don't have no grudges. I, I don't want no revenge because I know now God put me here to be a blessing to you. It's all <laughs> good. Uh, uh, it's all good because God had a plan for their plot. Let's get out of here. Not only, is it, not only did God have a plan for their plot, uh, but their plot was part of God's plan. Uh, yeah, 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 it was. They, God had a plan for their plot. Uh, but their plot was part of God's plan. Notice, no, no, notice, notice Joseph is clear. Uh, God meant it for good, meaning God meant it for a good outcome. God, 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 God meant all of this to come out good in order to bring about uh, bring, it, bring, bring, bring it about as it is to this day. 
By the time we get to this particular point of the text, yeah, the famine uh, had come and gone. Uh, Egypt land had been saved. Joseph's family had been saved. They had been brought in to Egypt, given the best of grazing lands in Goshen, and it began to prosper there in Egypt. Joseph says, yeah, uh, 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 your, 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 your plot was all a part of God's plan. Uh, God, 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 God put me where I am right now uh, because he had a divine plan in mind. And verse, at the end of the verse, he said, the plan was to save many people alive. Yeah, the word people in the text means tribe or clan, and it points to the people of Israel. Uh, he says, uh, God saved Egypt, but the plan that he used to save Egypt was still part of a plan to save Israel. So it was part of God's divine plan to preserve life for future generations. Uh, that's, what it, that, 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 that's what that phrase means. It says that the word save means to preserve and to preserve, preserve who? To preserve Israel alive because God had made a covenant with old man Abraham. Yeah, and, 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 and God is a God that will keep his covenant with those who he enters into a, a covenantal arrangement with. Uh, yeah, the Bible says, a sinner suggests uh, that, that the, the plot of the brothers was really all a part of God's divine scheme of things. Yeah, it was all a part of God's plan uh, to preserve life for future generations. Uh, yeah, Joseph was put there uh, to make sure uh, the bloodline uh, didn't die out during the famine. Uh, he was put there to make sure that his family's life could survive hard times uh, during the times of the famine. Uh, uh, he was doing that because uh, he knew uh, that he had made a promise to Abraham uh, that one day uh, his seed would number more than the grain on the seashore. Uh, he had made a promise to Abraham uh, that one day uh, these lands that he traveled as a nomad, uh, his people will one day inherit. Uh, so in order to preserve the plan uh, or to preserve the promise, uh, God sent Joseph uh, there to Egypt land. Uh, and I don't know about you today, uh, but I'm so glad uh, that I serve a God uh, who makes moves in the presence Present, uh, because he's got plans for the future. Uh, I want you to know today uh, you don't want to be bitter over anything uh, because that bitterness uh, can affect what God has in store for folk coming after you. Uh, you want to do what you can right now uh, so you can pave the way uh, for those coming on later on. Uh, he said what was happening here is, is that my God uh, had you in mind uh, when he sent me here to Egypt. Uh, my God uh, had your children in mind uh, when, you, when, when, when you sold me uh, into slavery. Uh, my God uh, had your children uh, and my children and your grandchildren. Uh, my grandchildren had them in mind uh, when he sent me here uh, to a foreign land. Uh, there were many nights uh, I cried myself to sleep uh, because of what had happened to me. Uh, but it's all good now. Uh, there were many nights uh, I didn't understand uh, why I was stuck in a dungeon uh, down and down there in the prison house. Uh, but now I understand uh, there were days uh, I wanted to go back home uh, but knew I couldn't. Uh, but I understand it now. Uh, I've been sent here uh, to pave the way uh, for future generations. Uh, so I want to encourage you today. Uh, keep on doing what you're doing uh, knowing that somebody uh, is coming on after you uh, but can I tell you the real reason uh, why Joseph uh, could declare it was all good uh, he could declare it was all good uh, because not only was God uh, had implemented a plan to preserve life for future generations uh, but God was really uh, implementing his plan uh, to preserve 
serve uh, his eternal plan of salvation. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, that's really in the text uh, because God was doing uh, what he was doing uh, because he made a promise uh, in Genesis chapter number three. Uh, he made a promise uh, that after Satan uh, had dealt man that sinful blow, uh, he said, I'll deal with man uh, and I'll deal with Satan. Uh, I got a plan of salvation uh, already in store. Uh, when he called Abraham uh, from early Chaldees uh, to go to Canaan land, uh, I heard him tell Abraham, uh, in your seed, uh, the whole world will be blessed. Uh, that's why he did it here, uh, is that God had a plan uh, to bless the world uh, through the seed of Abraham. Uh, and it was all a part, y'all, uh, of God's eternal plan of salvation. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad, I'm glad today that my God had an eternal plan in mind. I want to remind you, like I said earlier, in my worship experience, I haven't dotted every I, I haven't crossed every T, I've messed up from time the time but I'm so glad uh, that my God uh, had a plan of salvation in store uh, all have sinned uh, and come short of the glory of God but I'm glad uh, I'm glad uh, God had an eternal plan in mind uh, it's wrapped up in the text y'all uh, in this phrase uh, God meant it for good y'all uh, it really points to a prayer of Jacob uh, when he was turning back home uh, was meeting up with old man Esau. Uh, he prayed to God, uh, oh God, uh, I don't deserve uh, the least of any of your blessings. Uh, I went out with one staff in my hand. Uh, now I'm coming back two companies. Uh, oh yes. Uh, what Joseph was saying, Jacob was saying there is, my God, uh, I left out a trickster uh, with no money in my pocket, uh, but you made a way uh, in spite of of me you brought me back home more than more than what I ever had uh, that was his way of saying uh, God will uh, accompany even sinful persons uh, to bring about eternal destinations uh, I'm so glad today uh, that sin uh, is not too big for God uh, I'm glad today uh, my mess ups uh, that have to cancel out my destiny uh, I'm so glad Oh, I'm glad Jesus Christ, Mary's baby, was sent for me. He was sent for you. He died that we might have forgiveness today. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. But early, early, Sunday morning, he got up with power in his hand. That's why I can declare it's all good. It's all good today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all good today. Anybody glad about it? If you're glad today, just join me one time. Say yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Don't let it make you bitter. It's part of your growth and development. And at the end of the day, all of us got something that's got to be worked out of us. And every now and then, God will use hurt to help us. But when it's all done, even in the midst of it, you can still declare, it's all good. It's all good because whatever someone means for my bad, God has already worked it in for my good. If you're glad about it, just say yeah one more time. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, praise team. There may be somebody here today who has not accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. We need you to come right now. Come give him your life. Give him your life today. Amen. It's through him he makes it all good. He came that you might have life and have life more abundantly. He is the good shepherd. Amen. Uh, he, he gave his life for the sheep. He gave his life to make it all good. But you got, you got to accept him into your life. Ask him in. And remember, as Prentine said earlier, it's, it's, it's not too late. It's not too late. 
do it today, do it today. 859-252-7191. There's someone here right now, 859-252-7191. Maybe there's somebody, or maybe you want to email us, amen. Amen. You can check us out at, on, on our website, fabclex.org, fabclex.org. You can, you, can, you can contact us there or, instant, or message us in our Facebook uh, message um, location. God bless you. God keep you. Come on and give us an invitation on selection. you've been blessed on this worship experience amen and and give yourself give your god is there with open arms amen uh, waiting to receive you into them again we encourage you to do that if you're not accepting your lord and savior please do that if you want to talk to someone about that talk to me about that give us a call we will return your call uh, uh as soon as we possibly can but god bless you god keep you and remember it's all good May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest and rule and abide with each and every one of you henceforth, now, and forever. Let all of God's children say amen, amen, amen. God bless you. I love you. And God loves you too. Have a blessed week.